What? Hinata, Tiffany, do you mind? <clears throat> what makes a fighting game stand the test of time? It's a combination of memorable characters, engaging gameplay, and immersive storyline. All of which rival schools has set up the ass! What's up, my little carcomaniacs out there? I am Carcamo, the forger of pain. I'm a pro wrestler that loves horror, anime, and video games. I'm also the South American Extreme Champion from Wrestling Alliance Revolution War Ecuador. And welcome back to Mad Panic Gaming. Today, we're gonna see why this awesome franchise needs a comeback. This franchise is a team-based fighting game like X-Men vs. Street Fighter. Rival Schools has a diverse cast of characters, each with their own unique fighting style and abilities. Whether you prefer fast and agile fighters or the heavy hitters, there's a character for you. Game Story Mode is a thrilling journey through a conspiracy that threatens the safety of the students and the city. You know, like Harry Potter, before the Harry Potter movies. The first time I gazed my eyes upon this game was on a friend's house and his brother called Franklin and Nihel Mike, playing then my pirated copy of Pocket Fighter. And inside it had the demo for Rival Schools. It was love at first playthrough. <laughs> Before I became a serious collector, of course, back in the day, all my games were pirated. But anyway, that's besides the point. I knew I needed this game in my life. So, what did I do? I got a Japanese copy for Rival Schools. Why, you may ask? I know this deserves further explanation. In Panama, where I come from, for the most part, we always got pirated Japanese games. And this was going on since the 80s. Ooh, yeah, the good old NES days. It's not like I didn't want the English version. It's just that I never got one. So the game came with a second disc. Actually, this was the main feature, disc one, where you create a custom character in a dating sim. Yes, you heard right. Depending on your choices, it affected the story and your character's moveset and special moves. Apart from that, it had some awesome mini games that included mostly the sports team, ranging from baseball to football. Yes, for us Latinos, that's the name we call this. Football, not soccer. A year later, in 1999, we got another Japan only exclusive for rival schools called. <clears throat> Let me do my best not to butcher the title Neketsu Sengsung Niki 2. It was an update with some new characters and extras. And more of that dating sim goodness. Rival School's graphics and art style hold up remarkably well, even by today's standards, especially its Dreamcast sequel named Project Justice. The game's action is fluid and engaging. 
with vibrant colors and impressive animation. Adding a third character to the team, more like a Kino Fighters game. And of course, you can make a devastating three character super move that will keep you coming back for more beta. Capcom hasn't forgotten entirely about this saga, with Kiyosuke being a playable character in SNK vs. Capcom 2. Batsu has proven to be the favorite. He's been a part of many games like Project X Zone. Also, being a pleasurable character on the underrated Tatsunoku vs. Capcom for the Wii. Tiffany and Hinata making a cameo in the background of the beat stage for Street Fighter V. And speaking about Street Fighter V, Akira made it as a playable character in the last season of that game. Akira wins! Ooh, and I'm not done yet. The Mugen fan community certainly hasn't forgotten about the franchise, making 2D sprites for Batsu, Hinata, and Tiffin. If you're looking for a franchise that never gets old, then look no further than Rival Schools, with its unforgettable characters, gripping storylines, addictive gameplay, is just as thrilling as today as it was back in 1997 until the 2001 Dreamcast sequel. Rival Schools!